Hello, this is David D. Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists around the world who have been working outside the mainstream for decades who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so you want to make sure you click below on the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you'll be alerted to the when we drop our next video. I couldn't resist one this one because it was actually sent to me by a friend. I call him Gems from Friends and, of course, uh, Robert Berger, who I co-authored a paper with for the last, the 2000 and, uh, no, I think it was 2016, I don't remember, or 2017. I think it was 2016 CMPS conference. He and I talked about uh, why the Earth has been expanding more from the bottom than on the top. Um, he sent me this link, and of course, <laughs> the title is just absolutely phenomenal. And, if, and and actually, underneath it is even more interesting. It says, "Galaxy without dark matter baffles astronomers." Well, the truth is, is you don't need dark matter at all. In fact, uh, Newton's describes that, and I'm going to tell you exactly how at the end of this video, and you don't have to know almost anything about science. And to do to understand that and this is of course is the most this is the phrase that really got him to send me this because there's so many of articles that talk about dark matter and you know they're setting themselves up for the next big uh, uh, Nobel prizes of, I'm sure scientists surprised to find NGC uh, 1052 dash DF2 devoid of mysterious substance but say its absence strengthens case for its existence Okay, you get that? That its absence isn't actually a reason to say that it exists. Now, I don't know, do anybody, does anybody know anything about debate anymore? What it means to debate? What it means to uh, give logical arguments f to try to bolster a point or to make a point or to argue? I mean, these, this is just asinine. In f the, the argument they're making is its absence is actually uh, a reason to show that uh, it absence is a strengthens its case for its existence. That's what they say. If you take a look here, you'll see that this is like a fog that sort of gets uh, a lot more points in the middle. Of those uh, so you, it's sort of sort of like a galaxy that's sort of this uh, fog galaxy where the stars are closer together uh, in the center and then get further apart. And this isn't the way galaxies are supposed to be. And of course, dark matter tells us that. And let's just read that. A distant galaxy appears completely devoid of dark matter and has baffled astronomers and deepened the mystery of the universe's most elusive substance. <laughs> the absence of dark matter from a small patch of sky might appear to be, to be a non-problem, given that astronomers never directly observe <laughs> dark matter anyway. Uh, anywhere. It should say anyway. Uh, that's just... Yeah, they haven't observed it. How can you observe it if it's dark? If it's you know, and, and they say the absence of dark, of, of dark matter from a small patch of sky. Think about that, folks. Think about the logic of, of, of that. That means uh, they can't see it. They've never detected it. But the apps, they're, they're, they're saying there's an absence there. Just because of the way the galaxy is? I mean, how big of a house of cards can can you, they really work to believe what they're doing they will literally say that the absence of something is proof of its existence that's what this is saying the absence that's what it says however the most current theories of the universe suggest that everywhere that the ordinary where that ordinary matter is found dark matter ought to be lurking too making the newly observed galaxy an odd exception again how do they know how how's it lurking they can't, they can't see it. They've never seen it. How, how is it lurking? Uh, dark matter's existence is inferred from the gravitational influence on visible objects, which suggests it dominates over the ordinary matter at a ratio of 5 to 1. I wish extraterrestrials would come down and just put us in our place and laugh at this. I mean, this, this is about as primitive as what we think science was like probably 2,000 years ago. I, 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 maybe we were even better 2,000 years ago. Maybe our theoretical minds have just taken us to places we should never go and makes us a, an embar embarrassment to intelligent beings all over the universe. Paradoxically, the author said the discovery of, of, of a galaxy with dark, uh, without dark matter counts as evidence that it probably does exist. 
look at that sentence. Paradoxically, it just starts out that way. The author said that the discovery of a galaxy without dark matter, how, how do they know it doesn't have dark matter? It can't see it. There's evidence from that. Things. <laughs> I mean, that's a double shoot in the head. Shoot me now. Get, put me out of my misery. A competing explanation for the fast orbiting stars is that the way gravity drops off at a distance has been misunderstood. But if, if this were the case, all galaxies should follow the same pattern. And that's what they're talking about, that the fast, they're on the edge of galaxies, uh, stars are orbiting at a speed higher than Kepler or some uh, uh, Newton explains. That's what they say. The observation also raises a question about how galaxies form in the first place. Uh, the most current narrative suggests that because dark matter dominates the universe, slightly denser patches of dark matter. I can't take this. It's really just hard to read. I mean, why not? It, it, oh, it, just say it's blue and it's got feathers. I mean, you can't see it. We've never detected it, but it's there and it's in denser patches. <laughs> that would probably the initial seeds of things to clump together in the early universe and eventually end up as stars and galaxies. Of course, um, if you don't think the Big Bang, the Big Bang is such a huge problem, then, you know, you know, when you got a house of cars, you might as well just build it as high as you can. Because, you know, the general public isn't knocking it down. But we are. That's why we exist. And we are an army, folks. We're growing. This whole story of one dark matter being the scaffolding on which the entire galaxy is built, said Van Dukum. It's not just a component of a galaxy. It's like a spiral arm. It's more like a fundamental skeleton that underlies all the structure of the universe. Something we can't see, we've never detected before, and its absence is pro proof of its existence. I mean, come on. I mean, you can't you can't contrive something illogically stupid as this. I mean, I you I, I don't know. I'm trying to wrap my mind around that there are human beings that actually write this and say these things and go around talking about these things. I I, I can't believe it. Speculative explanations include a collision or catastrophe cataclysmic event within the galaxy resulted in all the dark matter being swept away. <laughs> I'm trying not just to give up science and become a professional bowler or something, you know? Because it's scary that these people have positions of any type of authority in, in, in humankind so anyways let's go let's go on and and I'm I'm glad I put this slide here and we're starting here we can explain all of this with Newton what are we explaining why does dark matter exist well dark matter exists in people's minds because stars around the edges of galaxies according to Newton should be going slower and the reason they think that is because they use point masses. They look at the galaxy and all the mass in it, and then they do these calculations from it. But if you take uh, and you look at this, which I have a link down below, I've talked about this before, these two I've talked about before, but I'm putting them together here because you've got to look at them. Newton's gravitational law over dark matter. What does he do? This is um, uh, Cameron Ribigsaw. Ribigsaw. Okay? One of my favorite guys in our group. He, he comes every year. He is just an amazing scientist. I love his work. And if you want to see him actually explaining this, we do have this um, on our CNP, CNPS um, YouTube channel and Newton's Gravitational Law Over Dark Matter. Yes, they're not the greatest videos, but we do our best, and we uh, actually broadcast these things live on, on Facebook, and I hope some of you guys will tune in when we have our conference in the, at the end of June. So you can take a look at it. And if you look on there, this is really simple. This is really simple concepts. I told you it's not going to be hard. You see that big cross on, the, on, the, on, the, on what he has uh, on the screen there? Basically, he's saying that galaxies are, have a bunch of arms. And these arms are not homogeneous. That lo and behold, galaxies 
are not homogeneous. Their, ma their mass is not a big disk. It's not a point with all the mass in one place. So when you do calculations, the reason these calculations come out wrong is because you're treating a galaxy as a homogeneous entity, piece of mass. And it isn't. Well, to go on, here's my dad. Another video that is absolutely great. I just admire like crazy. This is dark matter versus G, the particle model. And my dad discovered something that, oh my gosh, just hits you and smacks you in the face when you see it. And again, why am I talking about my dad's ideas about dark matter? It's because we have a gravitonic model. We have particles that cause gravity. Well, it's the same particles that cause light. The same particles that are electrons and that are electricity. It's all one particle. And basically, with that particle model, we have clouds of these particles and just particles in all directions. And when you have more particles, suns that block this, the gravitational field is different. It isn't uniform. And here is, to me, one of the most revealing graphs when it comes to dark matter that exists. This gives you the answer. It's staring you in the face. Take a look at the blue line and take a look at the dotted line. Now the dotted line is what mainstream science says should happen because they're using Kepler. I don't know why they're using Einstein. I thought he was... Don't... Forget about the logic. Don't worry about it. Take a look at the blue line. It looks like you drop a, a drop in a pool, sort of like you drop something in a pool and it makes a wave. Well, if you go from it, it goes up and then down and up and down. And all those undulations are these are the speeds of the of the stars as you go away from the center of the galaxy. You can see the structure of the galaxy in the graph from the from the velocities. This is the actual velocities versus Kepler. It's not dark matter. Why? Because if you use geometry, and here's the answer. I told you, you should wait for the end. I told you, here it is. Why people don't get this? I don't know. But let's take a look at what I've summarized here. When you take into account the geometry of star positions in the galaxy, which is not homogeneous, Newton's gravity perfectly describes the velocity of stars everywhere in the galaxy, including the edges. Why is that? Galaxies should be treated, uh, should be, uh, galaxies should not be treated as point masses. The, gal the galaxy gravity field is not homogeneous. I'm going to read those again because I read terribly here. Galaxies should not be treated as point masses, and the galaxy, the galaxy gravity field is not homogeneous. No dark matter is needed. Just good old Newton. That's it. And while we talk about dark matter that we can't detect, never have detected, that we know there, that clumps together, even though we've never seen it, that should be there but isn't, and then the, its absence gives proof for its existence. Why is all this stuff? Look at the rigmarole. Look at all the stuff that they're going through just because they didn't do a simple model of, a gra of the galaxy in showing that the Newtonian gravitational field is not uniform. It's not a point mass. Take, the, take those asteroids, those uh, asteroids that look like potatoes. Think about the gravity and going around it. Is it going to be treated like a big sphere? No! Even our common sense says that. It's not this. If there are two of these together, you get a gravitational field that's a little wonky. It's not hard to even calculate. Anyways, that's it. I just, I really want to thank Robert Berger, my fellow colleague who sent me this. And uh, he certainly was absolutely right. The absence of dark matter proves its existence. And you can look at the 
absolute when you read these my mom after i would explain these things to her could read these same articles and she would just she said to me she said it boggles my mind that these people can even sit down and write this stuff because it doesn't make sense within itself it does it's not self-consistent even the logic doesn't make sense. You would, the this article, if this person, whoever wrote this article, stood in front of a debate class to debate the existence of, of dark matter, they would get an F. Yet it's published in all the nerds and all the people who want to pretend that they're the intellectuals who want to show themselves that they're smarter than everybody else goes ahead and says, oh yes, I understand that. <laughs> its absence, of course, shows its, its, its existence. Folks, the emperor has no clothes, and this channel is telling you that, and that's why I'm here. And like I said, don't take my word for it. I've got all the links below. Look at it yourself. Let it roll around in your head a while. You will see this logic is for the birds. Remember, don't take what I say on faith or anybody else. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm Dave D. Hilser, your science therapist. <laughs> a little depressed with these kinds of things, but good news. We've got great models out there. So stay tuned to our channel. Make sure you hit subscribe below. Ciao for now.